I'm here with Josh Colazzo of the Jonathan Stout Orchestra. So Josh, for our viewers, what makes the difference between swing drumming and rock drumming? Money. That's, that's very true. Money. <laughs> uh, I mean, basically, playing wise, I mean, without, you couldn't have rock and roll without swing drumming. Basically, with swing drumming, you're swinging the eighth notes, so rather than going da 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 da, da you're going da 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 da. So, for instance, I'll just give you a little brief run through from a swing kind of pre-swing to swing music to kind of like early R&B to rock and roll. Like, so early on, like 20s music, yeah. where it's emphasizing that now, when swing really you know, hit it in the 30s, a lot of the drummers, especially to help the basses out, they would start rocking the, the bass drum on all, all four beats. So what they would do is eventually they moved over to the hi-hats, and on the bass drum would be gone, instead of gone. And that kind of creates that swing feel, the true, true swing feel. A lot of drummers even add in the left hand and then uh, emphasize that even more. So you can go like. So what happens is from there, from swing drumming, over time, you know, dancing changed, music started changing. And like with like Louis Jordan, those guys, they started going into like shuffles. So. Drumming was mixed up all through those, you know, decades, and there was some, like, like all swing drummers played that way. But that's kind of my idea of how, you know, things change. So that's that. Excellent. So what's what's the difference about a vintage kit? Yes. Right, thanks, guys. Well, uh, for me, uh, obviously the vintage kits, I just like playing more, especially with the style of music, because you get that true sound. But they're not as loud, they're not as responsive as a modern kit. Like for instance on this. This, this tom, which is actually a rack tom. On a normal modern kit, this tom would be like, like very open sounding. And you can, you know, you can put uh, you know, certain heads on the modern kits to make them sound more vintage. But in my opinion, you never get fully there. So, I mean, you know, the bass drums were usually a lot bigger. This is a, you know, 22 inch. It's just kind of a medium size, but normally back then we have a 24 or a 26 inch bass drum. 28. Yeah, or 28. Yeah. And uh, the main thing for me is, other than drums and cymbals, uh, all the cymbals back then were a lot smaller. And especially during the swing swing era, you didn't really even have a the today's idea of a, a ride symbol wasn't even happening in like the 30s. So back then, these are perfect examples of small symbols. They're really thin, bend them, and they give that. Whereas today, they're a lot thicker, and when you hit them, rather than getting like a, you get more of like a. A pingy, pingy sound to them. So those are just a you know, few little things that are different. Nice. Are different. So who are your favorite swing? Uh, who are some of your favorite swing drummers? And can you give us examples of how they might have drummed or what they what might have defined their style? Uh, I mean, my favorite my favorite drummer from back then is Gene Krupa, um, you know, Buddy Rich, Zooty Singleton. I mean, those are probably my big three right there. Uh, as far as they play, I mean, between Krupa and Rich, Rich was a technician, whereas Krupa was, I mean, he was definitely a technician, but nowhere close to uh, Rich when, when it comes to you know, um, fills and stuff like that. Rich would yeah, be very into like... And, 
and Krupa would get into that, but he, Krupa was more of a, a dance drummer in the sense that he would, you know, he would try to make it very danceable as drum solos. So like, whereas Krupa, whereas Rich would be, you know, going crazy, Krupa would be like. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, they also, both of them, you know, they, they were really into, uh, you know, high F, with the you know, emphasize on all the fours. Uh, as Zudi Singleton was more, he was kind of a crossover drummer from the New Orleans stuff and Chicago style into swing. And uh, he was actually, he didn't really use the hi-hat. I mean, there's a picture. There's a picture of him playing with the hi-hat. But I've never heard a recording with him with a hi-hat. So without that, he would be you know, doing more of a New Orleans kind of thing with the swing music. Kind of like and even you know, ri writing the cymbals. You know, they didn't have ride cymbals. He would usually ride a china cymbal with like rivets or even just a small cymbal. So it'd be like. I like the, the New Orleans little tricks on the rim. Uh, yeah, so those are my big three. Awesome, thank you so much. No problem. So uh, you also are not only in Jonathan's band, you also are in a few other bands. Yep. Did you want to plug any of those? Uh, I play in uh, Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. Which is awesome. They, 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 they're, you know what? <laughs> You know, if you like hippie music, just go ahead and buy it, Edward Sharp. <laughs> I, 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 I definitely didn't buy both the EP and the album on I, I, Oh, crap, I did buy them on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the other band I play with, and uh, they're great, and I have a lot of fun touring with and recording with them. And I also have a, back in L.A., a little side project called uh, Josh Colazzo and his Feet Warmers. Really haven't done much with that, but uh, once I have some free time, I plan on doing that. And... Uh, yeah, it did inspire the Campus Five. Just, just FYI, like, we're totally the feet warmers. Jonathan was on the first feet warmers. Yeah, I was. The the feet warmers are totally the yard birds of the Campus Five. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you guys so yeah, much. You, you guys are awesome, John, Josh Colato, and Jonathan Stout. I, I, I'm just the peanut gallery. <laughs> just the peanut gallery. Thanks, guys. Yeah.